Howdy, partner, and welcome to a new video here on the channel. I just finished playing in the Outlaws of Thunder Junction Early Access event, which allows me to play with the new cards before they drop on Entity Arena on April 16th. And I figured this is the perfect opportunity to talk to you about the top 15 cards that impressed me the most, either because I played them in my own decks or my opponent played them against me. So let's get started. All right, so up first, I have Fortune Loyal Steed, a 3-mana 2-4 legendary creature Beast Mount. And when Fortune enters the battlefield, you scry 2. Whenever Fortune attacks while settled, at the end of combat, exile 8 and up to 1 creature that settled it this turn, and return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. And the settle cost on Fortune is 1. Now, settling is basically crewing, but for creatures. And what I did with Fortune is I played Fortune in an Ortsov Blink deck, but I did it with like the prototype creatures as well. So I had Flesh Gorger, Settle Fortune, and then at the end of combat, I would exile Fortune and Flesh Gorger, and Flesh Gorger would return to the battlefield as a 7 7. Um, and that felt pretty broken, but I also played Fortune with other like good white ETB creatures, like Ambitious Farmhand and Spirited Companion. And that already felt like really good value. So Fortune impressed me not only with the prototype creatures, but I think Fortune could also make an impact in basically any deck that cares about, you know, getting more like ETB effects. Like you could combine Fortune with Loran, for instance. Like I could see it pop off in Orts of Midrange, just mono white midrange. Um, and um, yeah, as a two power creature with four toughness, it makes for a pretty good like attacker and blocker as well. Um, I said to my chat, a couple days ago that if fortune was three toughness the card would basically be unplayable but because four toughness is so good at the moment in standard it basically means that fortune fortune might not trade but fortune doesn't usually get like removed through combat either at four toughness so that felt good and on top of that what i learned in early access is the way that fortune is worded is that even if fortune dies in combat you still get like the exile effect which is something that I felt like wasn't very obvious, but that's the way it works. So even if Fortune gets like blocked by something with Death Touch or just get, gets removed, I would still be able to blink my prototype creature back in play as a 7-7. So that definitely gave me some more like, okay, this card is actually really good um, vibes. <laughs> so yeah, Fortune, the first card that impressed me a lot. All right, so up next we have Duelist of the Mind, a two mana creature human advisor with flying and vigilance. And Duelist's power is equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn. Whenever you commit a crime, you may draw a card. If you do discard a card, this ability triggers only once each turn. And this card felt like an easy four off in like the, the prof decks that are happening a lot in standard right now. So um, if you are a prof enjoyer just like me, go grab yourself some Duelist of the Minds because it was really good. But I could also see it in just like your average, you know, wherever like Ledger Shredder fits in, I think you could very easily fit some duelists as well. So it doesn't have to be a prof deck. It could also just be like a Demir deck that draws that cares about drawing cards, or like even a mono blue tempo deck that draws that cares about drawing cards. But yeah, it was super impressive. And like one of the things that I noticed during early access was that committing crimes is super easily done. <laughs> so Duelist of the Mind, like combined with a Counterspell, Spot Removal, like maybe even like Graveyard Hate Rune and License Curse, all, all of those are ways to commit crimes and ways for you to draw a card and then discard a card. So it will be very easy like filtering through, uh, through your deck. But also if you play it in the right shell and you have really like cards that will draw you a lot of cards before going to combat, Duelist of the Mind um, turns into a very scary attacker very quickly. And uh, yeah, it really impressed me in those uh, those types of decks, especially the prof decks. So, all right, up next we have Geralt the Flesh Rite, a three mana, two, three legendary creature human warlock. And whenever you cast a spell during your turn, other than your first spell that turn, you create a two, two blue and black zombie rogue creature token. Whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it for each other zombie that entered the battlefield under your control this turn. And this card in the right deck goes crazy. <laughs> um, so you're basically looking to play this card in a deck with a lot of like cantrip effects, for instance, which is why I think that it will be a staple creature in the blue-white mentor decks that play cards like a lot of cheap cantrip effects, but even like Geralt put it in the graveyard and bring it back with something like Helping Hand and then fire off a consider immediately after means that you can already start generating a bunch of zombies as fast as like turn two if you have put Geralt in the graveyard on like turn one with the um the surveil card so 
in that Garolf will be incredible, but I could also see Garolf in like an Izzet deck with a lot of like cheap cantrip effects, for instance, or maybe even like a type of mono blue deck. Um, all I know is that Garolf is great. And if the card can survive past the turn that you play it, and you have it in the right shell, you will flood the board with zombies super quickly and it's just going to take over. And um, in general, it just felt super impressive. All right, up next, Forsaken Miner. And I was super hyped for this creature when it got revealed. And after having played with the card a lot and played against the card a lot, I'm still super hyped. A 1 mana 2-2 two -two creature, Skeleton Rogue, and Forsaken Miner cannot block. But whenever you commit a crime, you may pay 1 black to bring the Forsaken Miner from your graveyard to the battlefield. And this thing was so good in so many decks. It felt super impressive in this like mono black, like skeleton aggro type deck. Where you had a curve of turn one forsaken minor turn two case of the stash skeleton turn three corpses of the lost like the thing especially with corpses of the lost was just so so good but i also played it in like these you know committing crime types of decks i played it in like a rectal sacrifice where i would also commit a lot of crimes because this card is probably like one of the best sacrifice creatures that we've seen in a very long time not only for standard but i could also see it see play in like pioneer even like, if I use Forsaken Miner to, like, play a Sacrifice type card, like Annihilating Claire, for instance, which ne I need to, like, sacrifice a creature for, then destroy a target creature an opponent controls. If I have two mana up while I'm doing that, I can pay the black to bring the Forsaken Miner back to the battlefield immediately. I haven't even tried it out in anything like a, a, like a mill deck where I can commit a crime to bring it back to the battlefield, but I'd imagine it would be really good in something like that as well um yeah minor even as like a one mana two two like <laughs> be real a one mana two two already is just so good it's just a super impressive creature and i think it fits in so many decks maybe even like mono black i haven't even tried that out yet so uh, just like a mono black mid-range type deck that happens to just casually commit crimes <laughs> or something like that because committing crimes is super easy and uh yeah nah the card was just fantastic and lived up to its expectations for sure all right, so this card, you guys, when I saw it first, I was like, okay, eh, I don't know, I don't know. But, man, Gisa the Hellraiser. <laughs> what a bomb. Five mana, four, four, legendary creature, human warlock, war two, pay to life. Skeletons and zombies you control get plus one plus one and have menace. Whenever you commit a crime, create two tapped, two, two, blue and black zombie rogue creature tokens. This ability triggers only once each turn. I was so wrong about this thing. Like, it is just insane. Um, it felt especially impressive when you had like crime engines online. So a great example of that would be Tiny Bones Joins Up. I'll talk more about that card later. Or like an Unlicensed Hearse or a Lord Skitter. Committing crimes, like I said, is easily done. And Gisa giving you like six power for doing so because she's a Lord. So the zombies that you create will get the plus one plus one when she's on the board. I don't think you understand. Like, I felt alive when I had the Tiny Bones joins up in play. I curve out into Gisa, or like maybe even faster than that because I have like a treasure token laying around and just shove like six power on the board or like 10 power on the board. And whenever I commit a crime, I add an additional six power to that. It was just, it was just ridiculous. Like, I resolve Gisa on turn five. I get my zombies. You know, I find a way to like commit a crime cheaply on my turn. I play like spot removal on my opponent's turn and every time I commit that crime I get more zombies. If you don't remove her, she will take over and just like Geralt, she will flood the board with zombies. Like I was so wrong about this thing and the also what I really like about Gisa too is her ward cost is really good. Like pay two and then pay two life. She's not easily removed like that. Um, which adds a lot to uh, to her power. She is going to be an absolute staple at the top end of car or like decks that care about committing crimes. I could see her in like skeleton decks. I could even see her in like mono black decks because you know your average mono black deck already commits a lot of crimes like naturally through playing hand disruption, spot removal, and other ways that they want to like target their opponents. She was just super impressive and um, yeah, what a card. Like, <laughs> what a card. Hopefully, soon there will be some gameplay up on the channel from my adventures in early access, and you'll see her go crazy. Like, I didn't think that Gisa was that good. Then I played against one of my opponents that was also trying to commit crimes. They had Tiny Bones joins up. They slammed Gisa. 
and it literally took me one second to realize guys we need to start playing giza this thing is insane <laughs> so yup giza absolutely up there for uh one of the cards that impressed me the most in uh during early access all right so the next card i really had to convince chat that this thing was good and nobody believed me till we popped off with it and we popped off with this card every single turn next card is Karvek the Punisher, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three legendary creature human warlock. Whenever you commit a crime, exile up to one target black card from your graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy. If you do, you lose two life. This thing is going to be necessary in like any deck that cares about committing crimes. I personally preferred Grixis the most. Um, I had also played it in like Junt Colors, but Karvek always felt good. And I could even see this card in like your average mono black deck because you already naturally commit so many so many crimes but Karvek becomes so strong when you realize that you can just replay these like spot removal cards cut down go for the throw from your graveyard Karvek brought back deep cavern bats for me <laughs> which was just ridiculous like imagine being able to just like replay a deep cavern bat crazy and that can be done in basically whatever deck you want to play it in. I mean, I liked Karvik the most with those like crime engines like Tiny Bones joins up on License Hearse. Being able to replay like every black card, like this card like replayed Corpse Appraises for me. It replayed Marchesa for me. It replayed Blood Eight Harvesters for me. Like <laughs> you name it. But um, yeah, committing crimes is easy. And Karvak being able to just basically bring back black cards from your graveyard like it's nothing was just beyond good so please don't sleep on Carvac, or you know you're gonna kind of regret it it's uh kind of what i um what i figured out crime decks mono black decks maybe even like mid-range decks that care about like getting a lot of value will we'll, we'll want like Carvac as well um yeah super super impressive card all right up next we have rush of dread a three mana sorcery spree card which is a keyword for like the new modal cards in the set. So you get to choose one or more additional costs. For plus one, you get to target opponent sacrifices half the creatures they control rounded up. Plus two, target opponent discards half the cards in their hand rounded up. And for another plus two, target opponent loses half their life rounded up. And some of you might know, some of you might not know, Rush of the Dread has a one turn kill combo with Blood Letter of Aklazots. Just two cards needed to basically win the game, no matter what the board state looks like. Just gotta make sure you have that blood letter in play and this card performed and this deck performed as well <laughs> um i just played it in like a demir deck with a lot of like tutor effects so i had besieges and i had case of the stash skeletons and um it was basically just try to assemble the combo and win the game but the thing that impressed me a lot about rush of the dread or rush of dread as well is that individually the card is strong just like blood letter of aklazoth is a strong card individually as well like, you don't need to combo off to win games. Like, this card holds its own. The target opponent sacrifices half the creatures they control rounded up has been, like, pretty relevant. Like, I have done that to, like, buy myself turns and then just win through Bloodletter, like, combat the turn after or something like that. Um, I haven't really used the discard ability much. One thing about a good combo deck is that the combo cards or the cards that are pieces of the combo hold their own. And I think the Blood Letter of Aklazot plus Rush of Dread combo deck does exactly that. Because this card is just good in general. Yeah, one turn kill Blood Letter is going to be a real deck. And um, Rush of Dread is part of that. So impressive card. Did exactly what I hoped it would do. And um, yeah, it might get a little bit annoying to play against in, uh, in Standard. But it plays some of my favorite cards. So I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy, man. What can I say? Rush of Dread is good. All right, so up next, one of my favorite cards from the new set, Tiny Bones joins up. One mana, legendary enchantment. When Tiny Bones joins up, enters the battlefield, any number of target players each discard a card. Whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, any number of target players each mill a card and lose one life. And Tiny Bones joins up is not only like great value when it enters the battlefield because you can make your opponent discard a card, but Tiny Bones joins up is the best crime enabler in standard. And the license hers, don't get me wrong, is a close second, but this card is just so insanely good because a lot of these cards that care about committing crimes are legendaries. So you have this like fantastic engine that you kind of like don't have to do anything for, like play it on turn one, 
then play your Vedmir on turn two, play your like Karvek after, play a Marchesa, play a Magda, it doesn't matter. Whenever you play that legendary creature that cares about committing crimes, Tiny Bones will immediately give you that trigger. And that is just so incredibly valuable. Um, even the like mill card and lose one life, like that losing one life is also something that eventually adds up. Kind of like does like five, six, seven damage out of nowhere. And before you know it, you've like won the game. You don't even realize how much damage you've done and like how that happened. But Tiny Bones joins up, did it for you. If you are going to commit crimes in standard, Tiny Bones joins up will be an absolute like four off. And um, yeah, just overall incredibly impressive card. And if committing crimes becomes like a tier two deck, which I hope it will be, if not like tier one, which I feel like the potential is there, it will be because of Tiny Bones joins up. That's it. The card is just incredible. And I really love playing with it. 10 out of 10. All right. So by now you can probably tell that a lot of crimes were committed <laughs> during the Ejlizzle early access stream. I can't help it. It just was so much fun to play and committing crimes like... Whenever I committed the crime, the deck did not feel complete without having Magda, the Horde Master, in there. A 2-mana, two 2-2, two -two legendary creature, Dwarf Berserker. Whenever you commit a crime, create a tapped treasure token. This ability triggers only once each turn. You can then sacrifice three treasures to create a 4-4 Red Scorpion Dragon creature token with flying and haste. Activate only as a sorcery. And this could just got shoved in all my crime decks because the creating of treasures was so valuable like, this was the reason I was able to cast Gisa on turn 4. I literally think that nearly at least half of the games where I played Magda in, I was able to create a scorpion dragon. It was just super easily done. Like I said, committing crimes is easy. And especially if you have these engines, like Unlicensed Hurge or like Spilt Removal. So you can, I can commit a crime when Magda comes down. I'll commit a crime on my opponent's turn. And then when Magda, when the turn gets back to me and I still have Magda in play, I can commit the third crime and immediately create a scorpion dragon like it's really like somewhat easily done i'm just happy to see treasures back on a good creature in the in standard as well so magda we will go in all my crime decks and um even in like my rectal sacrifice decks i played her too in my anvil decks because you commit so many crimes on accident magda was just like fueling me to like you know ramp into a vein ripper ramp into the new rectals or uh, literally just like I can sacrifice one of my treasures to the anvil. Um, she's super flexible and um, yeah, crime decks will absolutely love her. She felt fantastic. All right, up next, Slickshot Show Off, a two mana, one, two bird wizard creature with flying and haste. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Slickshot Show Off gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. You can also plot the card and this means that you can pay two and exile this card from your hand and you can cast it as a sorcery on a later turn without paying its mana cost. You can plot it only as a sorcery and this card is just ridiculous <laughs> like it's just ridiculous there's no other word to say it um i think there will probably be a form of a prowess deck that will end up being high tier two if not tier one in standard this could be um is that prowess this could be teamer prowess but i could also just see this card being shoved in like red aggro decks or maybe even like rule aggro decks like any deck that cares about like playing a lot of non-creature spells even like you know think play with fires lightning strikes monstrous rages that type of stuff this card just like pops off in it just like this card kind of embodies what the historic is that wizard deck feels like if you know you know and that is ridiculous <laughs> like that is just ridiculous like this is on its own going to shove an entire new standard deck at the very top, kind of like Boros Convoke emerging out of nowhere. Um, Slickshot Show Off is going to do that exactly as well. Especially now that we have the uh, the good um, fast lands, because is that felt very like much held back because the lands just were were awful, and now we have the good lands, so it's finally time to pop off. And um, alongside that, we also get a nice Slickshot Show Off to go absolutely crazy with. So. Um, yeah be afraid of this card is all i can say be, be very afraid because i died to this basically every time it got played against me it's just incredibly strong all right up next i have free strider lookout a three mana three three creature human rogue with reach and whenever you commit a crime look at the top five cards of your library you may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order this ability triggers only once each turn 
Now, personally, I didn't play with this card, but it got played against me a lot. And every time somebody played it against me, I was like, this thing is ridiculous. Because they would combine it with these, like, the, the desert lands that basically, like, commit a crime when you put them in play. And it would just ramp my opponent up like it's nothing. Now, I wonder if this deck is made, or, like, this card is maybe getting played in, like, Teamer World Soul Rage. Or maybe it's going to literally enable some, like, Soul Tire ramp deck or another form of ramp deck on its own because it just... It just went crazy. I, I can't say anything else about it. Like, or maybe people just got lucky against me and popped off, but I doubt it. Like, anytime somebody played Free Strider Lookout, before I knew it, it had like double my lands, triple my lands, and uh, things just got really out of hand. So, it's probably like one of the best ways to ramp, especially if you have solid ways to commit crimes in standard. And um, yeah, overall, just impressive creature. I didn't play with it myself, but. Very scary when uh, when my opponent played it against me. All right, up next we have the Gidrock Ravenous Ride, a five mana six five legendary creature frog horror mount with trample and haste. And when the Gidrock Ravenous Ride deals common damage to a player, you may sacrifice a creature that settled it this turn. If you do, you draw X cards and put up the X land cards from your hand onto the battlefield tapped, where X is a sacrifice creature's power and the settle cost is one. Yeah, this thing shouldn't have haste, <laughs> but it does for some reason. Like. This card is super pushed, and um, yeah, that's definitely something you notice when you play with it. I played this in like an Abs and Mount deck, which was really fun to play, but I could literally see this in like at the top end of Golgari mid range decks or, you know, Junt Legend decks, which is also one of my favorite decks that I've played. Hopefully, you'll see some uh, gameplay footage of that on the channel soon enough. This card just does a whole lot and has a whole lot of keywords that it shouldn't have, but it does. And it's just, uh, it's just super, super powerful. Definitely impressive. All right, and now for my favorite card from the entirety of Outlaws of Thunder Junction, and I did not expect this, Marchesa, Dealer of Death. Three mana, three, four, legendary creature, human rogue, and whenever you commit a crime, you may pay one. If you do look at the top two cards of your library and put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. This card is ridiculous. <laughs> like, it is ridiculous. It's also the reason why if I'm committing crimes, I will be in Grixis because the value that she provides is insane. The card draw she gives you is just like unimaginable almost, especially when you combine her with those really good crime enablers, uh, crime engines like Tiny Bones joins up, license hers, or skitter, you name it, spold removal. Like you have, you just make sure that if you have one mana up, Marchesa is just going to give you a card and she's going to give that not only on your turn, your opponent's turn she just she provides Borchesa provides and what I also really like about her is like her power and toughness like three power four toughness on a three drop is really good <laughs> I don't know the card just out of every card that I played with during early X's she is probably like the card I just had the most fun with playing and got the most value out of like I had her in play I committed some crimes I would never run out of cards again like, I would never run out of cards again in the right deck. The gameplay of that Grixis crime deck will be up sooner, soon enough, hopefully in the next couple of days. And uh, Morchesa will speak for herself. If you don't take my word for it, just wait and find out. She is just incredible. I love her. All right, so up next, we have Vraska joins up, a two-minute legendary enchantment. When Vraska joins up, ends the battlefield, put a death touch counter on each creature you control, and whenever a legendary creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you can draw a card. If you've played standard and you've played against this card called Gix Yogmoth Reuter, and you thought, damn, that card is good, imagine it on a two drop <laughs> and imagine it on an enchantment. So it's not easily removed with swap removal. You need enchantment removal. That's basically what Vraska joins up is. Um, yes, the card does only work with legendary creatures, but there are so many like incredible legendary cards in standard right now. You could just... I made like a Junt Legend deck and this thing just went crazy. I could even see it get played in like Golgari mid-range because, you know, how many legendary creatures you play in that. Also a lot of them. Soul Tie mid-range, like you name it. Vraska joins up was just literally a better Gix. <laughs> like you think, how could it get better than Gix? Well, this is it. So um, the only thing is, yeah, you got to play legendaries, but... There are so many good legendaries around. It's just easily done. The card is super impressive. And um, I really like the death touch on each creature you control as well. 
because I played Animist Might in my Legend deck as well. And basically making sure that, you know, all my creatures have Death Touch and I could just always remove something with Animist Might no matter how strong my creature was also felt really good. Um, so yeah, Raska joins up. A better Gix. Can you believe it? It was just so good. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. All right. And last but not least, and I have to be a little bit like, you know, cliche here, I guess. We cannot not talk about the Fastlands. Like that is going to be my pick for like the most impressive cards. I had been waiting on these Fastlands for so long and finally they're here. Finally, we can play as a Dex. Finally, my, my Simic Cookie deck has the lands that it deserves. Um, it just enables so much. Finally, the Orts of Mana is great. Like, I had been waiting on this for a very long time. And um, yeah, I'm just so happy that it's finally here. Finally, it feels like Standard is in a position where all decks get like an equal shot. Because I was always kind of like a hater of like, okay, so, you know, why does Rectals get like perfect lands? Why does Demir get perfect lands? And I'm out here literally being incapable of building an Iza deck because the lands are so shit. Like it just wasn't fair. Finally, we have the lands that we need. The thing is like it is, it does feel very weird to play in a standard meta where the lands are just as good as they are right now. <laughs> like it feels weird. It feels like I'm playing like Pioneer or something, but it's in standard. Um, at the same time, I just love having access to good mana. Like, I don't want the lands to be working against me. Like, we're a team effort right now. Like, we have to work together to beat our opponent. So don't be annoying and just like, let's work together and get it done. And finally, every color has an equal shot. And that's just all I've been asking for for a long time. And Thunder Junction has done that for us. So for that, I am super grateful. And um, yeah, go craft some fast lands. And be happy because that's what i did <laughs> and uh yeah it feels fantastic all right so that's it for my top 15 cards that impressed me the most during early x's there were definitely a lot of cards that i did not get to play with or see my opponent play against me like avon interrupter is a great example of this um i literally like i didn't know that the early access was only 10 hours i was planning on doing like a 12 hour stream and then keep going for like content for the youtube channel but uh, yeah, before we knew, we just got kicked out. So um, still a lot of cards, archetypes, decks, you name it, to explore when Thunder Junction arrives from NTG Arena. Um, but for now, on the YouTube channel, you can already start looking forward to some early access footage of some decks that were just really um, impressive. So look forward to that in the upcoming days. But for now, I, uh, I hope you liked this video. And let me know in the comments what you thought. Like, if you enjoy this type of type of video um i will happily make more just let me know that you enjoy it and uh, there'll be more on the way for you so yeah for now don't forget to subscribe it really helps the channel out and you make sure you don't miss out on my thunder junction bruise that way thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video this video is brought to you by ultimate guard ultimate guard provides you with premium protection for your trading cards like their incredible katana sleeves which are my absolute favorite for saving up my magic decks Ultimate Guard has everything you need to keep your magic cards safe, secure, and stylish. If you're interested in getting the best sleeves on the market, make sure to use my link in the description below.